sure, some Brits probably do have sandwiches and crisps, but you'd never find me doing that. Good morning, world! It's been a while. I know, I'm sorry, I've been back at work, I'm gonna try and upload as often as I can, maybe once or twice a week from now on. Please just have patience with me. Today we're gonna do something which I've wanted to do for quite a while, we're gonna pit the British against the Swedes. We're gonna find out the things that make them similar, the things that make them different, and then at the end, you get to decide who's better. I thought it would be interesting to discuss what I found from living in Sweden that is different from living in England, and the differences between the people, the culture, and just everything I can think of. Before we get going, I'm just a, a little bit hot in my new uh, hoodie here. I think I need to take this off. <sighs> Much better. One of the differences is how the Swedes and how the Brits respond to sunshine. As you may or may not be aware, both countries are notorious for not having much of it. And it's how we respond when there is sunshine. In England, we would do a lot of talking about, oh, I'd love to be out in the sun. Isn't the sun so nice? But then we wouldn't always do something about it. However, in Sweden, I guess because they have days with much less sunlight, as soon as there is sunshine, everybody goes outside. You can walk down main roads that have cafes littered on both sides, and as the sun comes through the buildings and can only shine on certain sections of the cafes, they are just crowded with people, all sat like sardines. And then the places where there is no sunshine has very few people. So they really, really, really love to be out in the sun. Brits also love to be out in the sun, but I guess we don't act on it as much as I found the Swedes do. The next thing is the phenomenon of fika. In Sweden, they drink a lot of coffee. In England, we drink a lot of tea. And in fact, ah, there we go. So Brits and Swedes, we both drink a lot of hot drinks. We just tend to drink different types of drink. Another thing that I have noticed is that Swedes will often talk on hands-free, whereas in England, it is super uncool to talk on hands-free. But I think I've worked out why. Swedes often wear hats, and so when they're trying to speak on their phone, it's really difficult to have their phone pressed against their ear. It can be very cold having your hand out. So they just wear hands free and then they can talk as freely as they would like. It's almost like it is the perfect solution to living in a cold, cold, cold country where you don't want to have your hands out and you can't put your phone next to your ear because you're wearing a hat. A similarity that Brits and Swedes have is that we both love to queue, we both love to line up. The Swedes though, they take it to the next level. If you're familiar with the shop Argos in England, where you have to go and get a ticket which has a number on it and that tells you which person you are in the queue, the Swedes do that everywhere. Another thing you'll see them waiting for is they'll often wait at a traffic light at a pedestrian crossing until the light is green. There can be no cars in sight and they will still stand and wait before they cross the road. They just love to queue. One of the things that maybe is a little bit more negative about Swedes, and I can only speak for those in Stockholm, is what feels like some kind of self-absorption. You can be walking down the street in Stockholm and if somebody is going to cross your path, if they want to get from point A to point B and your path crosses theirs, they will not stop for you. They will continue to walk in a dead straight line and it is your responsibility to get out of the way. Nobody seems to kind of be aware that other people might want to walk in a different direction. I didn't know if I wanted to include this, but it's happened now. The next thing is to do with being fashionably late. In England, if you were going to a party, let's say, that started at seven, very, very few people would get there for seven. Maybe you'd get there for half seven, maybe eight, maybe half eight, maybe even nine o'clock. The expectation is that you don't necessarily get there exactly when the time is given. However, in Sweden, if a party starts at seven, people will knock on your door 
at five to seven. The next thing is about greetings. So in England, I feel like the typical greeting between two guys is a handshake, whereas the greeting between a guy and a girl or two girls will probably be a hug. Whereas in Sweden, the first meeting is normally a handshake. And then if you have built up their trust and you have been friendly and you've created a bond or relationship after that point, everything from them will normally be a hug. There's lots and lots of hugging in Sweden. I don't like the gender specific kind of greetings that we maybe have in England or Britain. So yeah, I, well done to you, Swedes. Another difference, which is a strange one, is you never see Swedes eating on the streets or on public transport. I often go grab a bag of crisps or a sandwich or something, but you, you never see the Swedes eating while they're moving. So while they're going from one place to another, I, I end up feeling guilty and I feel judged about the fact that I'm eating. I don't know where you're going. There is one exception, which is an ice cream. You see a lot of Swedes eating ice creams, but other than that, they don't tend to eat much on the streets. I don't know, is that a conscious thing? Is that a thing you're told? I, maybe it's just a cultural thing, but it's something that I have noticed. I also went to Reddit and asked people if they had any differences that they'd observed between Brits and Swedes from their experiences. Some people came up with some good differences, like FX Hoy, he thinks that Brits think that eating a sandwich with some crisps is a meal. I mean, yeah, sure, some Brits probably do have sandwiches and crisps, but you never find me doing that. And then, as I expected, some of you did your best to ridicule either the Brits or the Swedes, just like Triggerby here, who uh, picked up on a British stereotype that I wasn't aware of until I moved away from England. So, uh, thank you very much. And. Puck one, who obviously is wrong because, I mean, you've seen me, right? I'm a hot piece of candy, right? So, I mean, this can't be true. Please tell me I'm not ugly. And finally, this gem that I'm gonna leave you with. It says police on British police cars, but it doesn't say ABBA on Swedish ones. Thank you very much for watching. Do you have any other differences that you have found between Swedes and Brits? I hope I didn't offend anyone, but these are just my experiences that I've had while living in Sweden for a year now. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to watch another one by me, then please click on my happy smiling face up here and that will let you subscribe. And as always, if you would like to watch another video straight away, then please click on this one here, which has been specially selected just for you. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you when I see you.